Good afternoon, everybody. This is Cleve Gaddis. I am coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, I am so excited to be on the RIS Media webinar today where we have got some great, great guests who are going to share with you what I think are very practical ways to deal with people face to face, even in an electronic world, ways that you can do the single most important part of business today, which is how do you get face to face with people when you're people don't want to get face to face with you? How do you keep business moving forward? And so we're going to talk a lot about that. But before we get started, <clears throat> let me just real quickly, uh, I am again from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to try to get my slides to work here, and I apologize that I'm not in full screen mode. If I if I was uh, smarter, I would be able to do my PowerPoint presentation better. But again, I'm Cleve Gaddis. I've been in real estate for 20 years. Uh, I moderate um, webinars like this. I do a radio show. I do coaching for Workman Success Systems. I also do a podcast. I do four podcasts a week. If you're ever wanting to look for them, you just search my name on Apple Podcast, and you can hear my thoughts at least on the Atlanta real estate market. Just search Cleve Gaddis on Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast source. I'd love for you to uh, interact with me and hopefully learn a little bit about how I look at the market uh, and what difference that makes to our consumers. If you have questions, you have a question <clears throat> box that looks like a chat box and you can ask questions. I will do my best to monitor all of the questions during the entire webinar. So if you have a question for either of our sponsors or you have a question for either of our panelists, I'll be happy to get those questions to ask. And I don't care if you think it's a stupid question or you think it's a great question, ask it, because I promise you, if you have it, other people have the same question. And I would love to get all of those answered for you. If you have technical difficulties, um, tough. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's not. If you have technical difficulties, put something in the chat box and somebody from RIS Media will be monitoring that and they will make sure that they get your technical difficulties taken care of as quickly as possible. And then stay on until the very end. We've got some free giveaways for you, and I think they're giveaways that you can use immediately in your business to get a better understanding of what you need to do in order to work through this virtual world better, in order to help you through the transition to get your business back to normal. I don't know if normal, back to normal is even a word that we can use now, but I know that's where everybody wants to go. Uh, the web address where you'll be able to go download those, and don't do that now because it's not going to be ready for you to do that, is workmansuccess.com. You can see it at the bottom of the screen, forward slash RIS Tech Tools. Uh, no cost, no obligation. We've got four different downloads, one of which is the entire presentation, uh, which you can get. And then I know that RIS Media will also take the full video of this webinar and post it on their YouTube channel so you'll be able to see everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this bad boy started. If it were not for our sponsors, we would not be able to have these webinars. So I have to say a big thank you uh, to Tim Rabara, the sales manager with homes.com. Tim and I have done several of these together. Tim and I also talk fairly regularly about business. I consider him a lead conversion expert. I'm always very interested in when he starts talking. But uh, Tim, thank you very much and welcome. I know you've got a few notes you'd like to cover before we get started. Yeah. Hey, Cleve. Thanks for uh, the uh, introduction there and definitely appreciate our, our relationship. I think we've worked together for the last almost five years now through Riz Media and Homes.com and I know that we got each other's personal cell phone number and we can uh, always reach out to each other anytime. So <laughs> thanks for That's that true. introduction. And I apologize for calling you every time we have a problem converting one of your leads and asking you to fix it for me. But, you know, I want to convert 100 percent and you always take my calls and I appreciate that big time. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Clay. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you know, and thanks, uh, you know, Ron and Ishe and Mark for joining the, the webinar today. Uh, I just couple things, you know, homes.com, you know, we are definitely uh, on the forefront as far as the industry, especially what's happening now. We're setting real estate professionals up across the board with some potential lead generation, you know, with traffic rising with everybody at home. Um, you, you know, the the traffic is definitely up there with 82% of home buyers that are not yet work with an agent. You know, they're logging into homes.com. And today, you know, we're talking about a couple things here. We're talking about a new lead feature that we actually added to our product, which I haven't told you about yet, um, Cleve which I'm, oh. I'm dying to talk to you about it, but it's a text feature uh, where, you know, now you can actually text directly. Uh, in fact, I think we added it just yesterday on the slideshow. If you can move it up just a little bit there to the, uh, I think it's one right after that. Coming, there we go. Yeah, it's a brand new text feature with Local Connect. It's a virtual tour, you know, with everybody being in shelter in place, 
you know, there's a lot of time to be able to log in since we're talking about, you know, some really some breakthrough technology today. Um, right. This is really, this really isn't breakthrough. It's just a simple link for them to watch the video, watch the virtual tour, giving the agent opportunity to be able to converse and speak to their uh, prospects. But, you know, today we are doing something uh, significant in terms of all of our products. If they text 484848, type homes, very straightforward. We can definitely uh, get together with everybody today on this webinar. And again, we want to thank all of you guys uh, for taking the time today and just really being part of this. And again, from homes.com and to everybody watching, thanks, Cleve, and you're doing a great job. Tim, thanks for uh, making this possible. I skipped over a couple of your slides. Do I need to roll back for you? Or are we good to move on? Well, you know, just what I was referring to was the, the new lead program that we have. You know, it's a zip code, zip based program. We've got the text features and the virtual link. Um, this really brands you as a local market expert in your area, you know, with traffic rising on the Internet because of the shelter in place. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity to do it. I have just recently listened to a Tom Ferry webinar. Yep. And we talked about really just uh, doubling down on our marketing going to this next part or this la last part of the year, this last six months. And so I think this is a great opportunity. We do have some availability. They can give give us a call. They can text me again, 484848 uh, with homes, and I'll be able to speak with them about some of the opportunities there. Wonderful. We just had a listener question who wants to know if there's a recording of the webinar, wants it emailed to them later. And I think if you're an attendee, I think uh, RIS Media will email it out to you uh, when we're all finished. Our next sponsor uh, is a new sponsor for me. In fact, I didn't know anything about them or their product until just recently. Uh, and normally when I do these introductory calls, I can't wait to get off the call. <laughs> Uh, but I'll be honest with you, Ishai, when I was talking to your director of marketing, I was really fascinated by what you built. Um, I, I, I know that you used to be in the military uh, in Israel, and so I've decided I'm going to be very nice and polite to you uh, on this entire uh, webinar. But you're a real estate guy, man, 20 years in the real estate business, um, doing brokerage and doing business on your own and decided there had to be a – a, a better, not a better way, a different way to create some income stability for agents. And man, anybody that is talking about helping agents make money on a consistent basis, you sort of have my attention from the very beginning. So tell us a little bit about uh, Rental Beast, if you will, please, sir. Yeah, sure. I mean, pretty simple concept. Uh, about half the population in the country is renting before they buy. And uh, when I was running a brokerage, when I was a real estate agent, there's just not a great way to service that half of the population. So with Rental Beast built, that our soul is the equivalent to MLS on the rental side. Most of the rental inventory doesn't make it into the MLS, or if it makes it into the MLS, it offers fairly low commission payouts. So we That's went true. and over the past, past decade built a database that now has access to more than 8 million off MLS properties. And what it does is it's pretty simple. If, if you're working with renters, you, you now have access to comprehensive inventory. You can get higher commission payouts. Uh, the second thing that it does is I think everybody on this call probably knows that almost every first time home buyer and the biggest driver of the sales market are the millennials. Those millennials are about 70% of the rental population. So it's a more cost effective way of building relationships with, this, with these buyers. Um, and, and the flip side of it, once you're interacting with landlords and investors, they're incredibly active, especially during, you know, s sales slowdowns. And uh, it just is amazing. For me, it's a must have in my portfolio. When I used to train agents, people used to ask me, what's your number one advice? Well, my number one advice is that anybody you'll ever meet is a prospective customer because they need a place to live. But for agents that are just unable to service renters, you're effectively kind of quarantining off, to use a popular term, half of the half of the people in your universe. That's you know we're trying to help people expand that. Um, I don't know. This slide kind of articulates the, the main things we do. So eight million off MLS listings. Um, we're very focused, and the nice thing about rentals is even before COVID. It very organically lends itself, the rental transaction, to be done completely virtually. So everything from lead generation to, um, you know, certainly the big management companies have already had virtual showings before this event. And we're personally onboarding hundreds of virtual showings now on the smaller landlords and on the smaller property management side. Uh, we, we also felt like there was not a ton of education inside brokerage in general about how to properly service a renter, convert them to buyers, et cetera. So we've built an entire university that focuses on that um, and really helps agents get out of the gate. 
whether they're brand new or whether they've done some business, but they want to diversify in it a little bit and not just rely on, you know, just single family sales. Um, and, it, you know, as a result, we're able to take all this inventory and generate a lot of prospective tenants, prospective leads, and everything can be closed completely virtually. A number that I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with, people look at rentals and they think, you know, it's a niche market or it's for people that can't afford it. It's $12 billion in annual rental commissions available to agents every year. Now, granted, you can't access that through the MLS, but you can access it if you have access to comprehensive inventory. And uh, you're based in Atlanta, super, super large rental market. I think one yes. of the, uh, is it Mark or Ron that's in uh, the, the mid-Atlantic? Uh, another very, yep, yeah, right. ve very robust rental market. We have a pretty robust footprint there. Um, and we have a bunch of resources that people can use, everything from free access to our university to some of the tools. And you have the link right there. It's agent.rentalbees.com forward slash resources. I love that. As I talked to your marketing person, he was talking about new agents coming in the business and being frustrated that it took a while to get their earnings going. And I love anything that would sort of help them move their earnings in the right direction. Uh, Ishai, thank you very much for sponsoring this and making this possible. Now let's get into the meat of the matter. We've got two great guests. I've got Mark Ryan, uh, a friend and a fellow uh, REMAX agent and coach who is from Centerville, Ohio. Uh, sounds to me like it's in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure exactly where that is, but Centerville, Ohio. It must be in the center of Ohio. I've also got Ron Howard, uh, who used to have hair, as you'll see in his uh, picture there in the presentation. He has hair. If you look at him uh, in the video, he does not have hair. And you're going to get to hear all of the reasons why he has no hair now, and it's such a cool story. Uh, so stay tuned here. I promise we're going to give you some great information, but don't be listening. Don't I, I caution you not to listen thinking that you're going to hear some new technology that you've never heard of before that makes an amazing difference in um, <laughs> how you deal with consumers. The reality is, is you're not going to hear about anything new. You're going to hear things that you've heard before, but you're going to hear very, very different ways to apply them in today's world compared to how we would have done it in the first place. Uh, Mark Ryan is a true student of real estate. I don't believe I have ever met anyone uh, who is constantly looking, constantly looking to improve himself, improve his team, constantly looking for answers. The conversations I have with Mark and his wife are always very fulfilling to me because they're sharing information freely. They're asking questions, and it's really great to have you on. So, Mark, I appreciate you taking the time to actually be a guest on our call today or be a panelist on the call today. Well, thanks, Cleve. That was really kind. I appreciate it. And hopefully I've got some good stuff for you guys. So feel free to put in the chat box if anything I'm saying doesn't make sense or you've got uh, some follow-up questions to it. Uh, but if you want to go on to the next slide there, I think that's that'll get us rolling, Cleve. If I could find my mouse, I would go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll bring a, ma I'll bring a map next time we're together. My mouse, is, my mouse is on one of my three screens. I have no idea where it is. I am technically challenged today, but I promise you we're going to make it through it. So, so the first thing you and I talked about as – uh, and it's not mentioned here, or maybe it is, but we talked we talked about you doing client happy hours via yep. Zoom. So can we jump into that as our first uh, subject? And by the way, we've got a quick question. Um, uh, Jose uh, basically says that everybody in Israel has to go in the military. So I guess I guess uh, Ishai, I guess I'm not so special. He was trying to say you're not so special. <laughs> Probably be a good idea. Uh, somebody wants to know if it's available. Rental Beast is available in New Jersey or New York, New Jersey and New York. It depends on where you are in your in these markets. So if you go to to that link and you'll get in touch with us, we'll be you'll give us your zip codes or your coverage, and we'll right away let you know if we if we're active there or not. Got it. And then uh, one of the questions is, uh, what's the average commission on these properties? And I think the answer is it might be, you know, something equivalent to a first month's rent. Uh, it's one, yeah, the, average, the average is one month's rent. And we've actually seen uh, a massive spike in both concessions to prospective tenants during this uh, COVID thing, but also the commission payouts to agents. Speaking, I'm a landlord, too. I know that I'm offering higher commission just trying to get a tenant in. Yep. So it's yep. actually... Uh, it's actually gone up dramatically in the past couple of months. Thanks for everybody's patience as I circle back in and ask some questions. But Mark, let's circle back yep. around and let's talk about client happy hours. Everybody likes to be happy. <laughs> right. And so a couple of things we try to do with any of our events is we like to have fun 
and we like to drink and we like to give back. So we try to tie charity into our to our things. Um, but a lot of times it is just about thanking our clients and, and having a good time. So when we couldn't get together in person, um, we started doing some some virtual things using Zoom and a happy hour was one of those. And um, we're kind of breaking out of uh, captivity here a little bit. So some of us are starting to get together a little bit in person. but. Um, we did several different ways. We did some birthday party kind of things. We did just some business networking kind of happy hours. And uh, the one that kind of got the best traction was a, a, just a, a group of clients got together that we know each of us liked bourbon and we did a bourbon tasting. And, uh, you know, I bought little, I've got one here, uh, little bottles on, um, Sure you do. Uh, sure you on do. Amazon, bourbon. right? Sure you have bourbon on your desk. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm in my basement this is, today. <laughs> this, is, this is supposed to promote healthy living. Uh, this is not a. Uh, <laughs> well, it's only, a it's only two weapon. ounces. It's only two ounces, so it's it's healthy. Uh, so let, so hold, hold, let me interrupt yeah. for just one second. So, were you nervous that the um, the shutdown was going to cause you to lose important relationships? Because you are, and you're going to share some ideas in a minute. You are a relationship king. You have a great referral program, a great rewards program. I mean, were you nervous? What what made you decide I need to have uh, I need to get drunk with my customers online? I mean, like, where did that come from? <laughs> so, I guess it was kind of a need that I think I had, or my wife and I both had, and a need that we saw from our friends when we were talking to them and communicating and just that you saw a lot of that on social media that people felt isolated and trapped and, and just sad so let's do some things that we can bring some joy into people's lives you know it, it's it's really not that awful being at home you know i love my kids and you know I, I cooked more and all that but it is a little depressing when you're not out and you know having dinners with people and just hanging out at other people's homes and so we tried to just make ourselves happier and be that catalyst we like being the solution for kind of anybody's needs so we try to get our clients to call us with any question whether it's real estate related or not that we want to be that concierge forever so we just wanted to be the one to provide the solution to, to make some people happy were you nervous when you decided to do something like this that like nobody was going to show up my concern would be okay i'm going to do this and i'm a wonderful host and then it's just me and my sorry little bottle of bourbon so like were you nervous yeah. <laughs> so the, the the bourbon one specifically i kind of knew people were going to show up because we got the commitments in advance and it it progressed from just a regular happy hour of while we were on there of I and honestly I don't remember kind of how it came up. It may have been me, it may have been somebody else on it just saying, hey, we should we should do a bourbon tasting and we just kind of brainstormed, okay, how are we going to do that? And I ordered these little bottles and you know we just put them in one location so you didn't have the social distancing issue. There it's all put in and you pick them up and you re-deliver them and uh, it's really become a, a pretty cool thing but the first happy hour was a little nerve-wracking of hey is anybody really <laughs> going to do this and right um, but we had we had good turnout the, the the slide that I guess you have up on the screen there about the trivia that one was another yes. one that we felt nervous and we you know you get we made it as a Facebook event and had people you know confirmed that they were coming but it's a Facebook event they got no money in the deal you know so you never really know until it goes live right <laughs> Right. Yeah. Now, Don has asked a question. He says it looks like, didn't ask a question, he made a comment. He says it looks like an empty two ounce bottle of bourbon. <laughs> and I thought I was clear, Don, that he drinks the two ounces of bourbon. <laughs> he probably did it before he got on the webinar. So, so talk to me about how you went from, okay, now I have people who are lonely just like me who are coming on a uh, happy hour. And now let's turn it into something that's meaningful uh, to kind of keep those relationships going. And you do a, an online quarantine trivia event. How right. did you publicize it? And, and I mean, how has your turnout been? I think you've done it more than once. I think it, maybe not. we did it the one time. We, okay. And honestly, it just, as we've started to open up, we've just gotten super busy. So we haven't done a second one, um, but okay. I've had other clients that have taken this and, and done some as well as in coaching clients. Um, so you're looking at the red uh, box there on the left. That was our yeah. Facebook thing. So we did, we, shared it on Facebook from our business page and from our, we have an MRG rewards page, which is our kind of client thank you kind of program. Yeah. So from both of those, uh, that went out an email to our database. 
don't tell everybody your secrets yet. Wait a minute. We got some. Oh, secrets. gotcha. Right. <laughs> Hold on now. Just don't get ahead of yourself. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so mo mostly online, uh, yeah. you know, whether it was from Facebook or whether it was from email, but it was, it was that. And then we did the Facebook um, event. So we asked them to reply back. Were they coming? Were they interested? Kind of thing. So we had, I, I think we had great turnout, but we did have, of course, more people that had said, yes, they were coming and not all the people that came said they were, but we did have a general idea. Uh, truthfully, it wouldn't have mattered if we'd have had 10 or if we'd have had 100 with Zoom, it could handle it. Um, right. Had we had a lot more of this, and I'll get to that in a second, some of the lessons learned from doing this. So if anybody decides to do it, I'm going to share a couple of tips that we did wrong and what we would do different in, in the future. Uh, but basically, we, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. There's a couple people on, uh, more than a couple people, who are not comfortable doing video meetings, online meetings. Um, what was the process you followed to get to where you were kind of comfortable using Zoom? Because I think that anything we could do face-to-face -face before, we could actually do face-to-face -face via Zoom. And as we get to the end of your segment, you're going to talk about doing a full listing presentation on Zoom instead of going to somebody's house or, as you used to do it, have them come into the office. But how did you get comfortable with Zoom? So I guess it's and, and it's kind of funny, but I, I like analogies and I'm kind of a smart aleck sometimes. But somebody pointed this out to me really? probably really? a couple. Yeah, it's true. It's true um, <laughs> that if I'm ugly, I'm ugly in person or I'm ugly in video. So I don't look any different on Zoom than I do in person. <laughs> so right. there's really nothing to be worried about. You're yes. looking at me. You know, the camera doesn't change anything. So, yeah. Um, so it, it's it, the biggest thing is just to get comfortable with the technology and how to use it. So I use it in coaching and it's really not that difficult, you know, get on and just get a buddy on there with you and poke around and play around. And in 15 minutes, you'll have the basics down of how does this thing work? So if you're afraid of it, don't be, um, you're going to know more about it than the people that are coming on to join you on whatever the event is. So, and if you start doing, try to do some meet, online meeting and you screw it up, I don't think people really care. I think they just think that makes you human just like they are. And like if they did it, they would screw it up. So they don't really judge you uh, for screwing it up. Before we get into right. your virtual listing presentation, which I think everybody is going to love, talk to us about your uh, realtor, your rewards program for consumers and how you've continued to push that. And by the way, how it also continued to bring lots and lots of business, I might add, to you while everybody else was shut down. Your business is rolling right along. Yeah. Um, so a couple things. So the reward program is kind of a thank you to past clients and thank you to people that have referred us business. The the main reason for it, though, is we want to re reward the behavior that we want our clients to, to exhibit. So it's a thank you, but it's also an incentive to do what we want. Right. So we all say, you know, send me referrals. I'm never too busy, you know, whatever it is that we're doing. And right. most of us probably do a pretty good job that our clients, if asked, would say, sure, oh, you need to call Cleve. Yeah, that he's the guy. What we're trying to incentivize them to do is not wait for somebody to ask me if who they should use, for me to reach out to Ron and say, hey, Ron, I heard you were thinking about selling or thinking about buying. You need to call my agent Cleve. He's amazing, you know, that kind of thing. So that's the, the big difference is we're, we're rewarding them for what the behavior we want. So yeah. what we do is you've got the different levels. Everybody's in silver no matter what. If they, they just agree to join, the only requirements are, or really the only requirement is we ask two questions. One, how did you hear about us? And then two is, would we be the only team you would uh, recommend in Southwest Ohio? So we're not actually in the center. We're Southwest Ohio, north of Cincinnati. <laughs> it says Centerville. It says Centerville. <laughs> Very center. true. So, so do you have people in your rewards program that have not been past clients? And have yes. you gotten referrals from people that haven't done business with you in the past because of this program? Yes. I mean, yes that's to like, both. like it's like beautiful when you think about it. Yeah, so see. what are a couple of the things I know you have a, a sample of a Facebook ad uh, that, yep. that I, I think you're you're advertising during the pandemic people who are buying and successfully selling and closing on homes, which I think is fascinating. And then you've got a great uh, reward program you did for graduating seniors, I think. Tell us about those two things and let's just jump right on in after that into your virtual listing presentation. Okay, cool. So real quick, back to the reward program. So we do monthly giveaways, but then the, the reward that we're doing for the behavior is if they send us a referral, we give them a $10 gift card to Starbucks and an additional $10 every month for six months thereafter. 
So I'm not your RESPA attorney, but we're rewarding them for a referral. It is not tied to the closing of a real estate transaction. We're rewarding them for that introduction. So it just has to be a legitimate buyer or seller. They don't have to buy or sell a house with us. They just have to actually be looking to do that. So once we meet with them, yep, that's really what they're doing. They get that. Um, then the, so the middle uh, slide yep. or portion of the slide there, that is what we this did. Is so genius. This is yeah. genius. You've got all <laughs> the you. high school seniors locked up. Uh, they can't go anywhere and you're giving them a graduation reward. And I'm like, man, I wish I'd have thought about that myself. It's genius. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so what we did is, you know, they, they're missing prom, they're missing the last days of school with their friends, they're missing graduations, all that kind of stuff. So high school seniors aren't really our target market. I mean, I hope they come back to us in five years, right. remember this right. and, and use this. But their parents are who we marketed to. So it was, again, to our sphere, we put it out to the public. It was picked up by a lot of the different um, community page kind of things, the news sources for our area. So, and we already do a lot in the community with Centerville as our high school. So you know, we're pretty well known, uh, but we reached out and to a local um, coffee shop and said, hey, here's what we're looking to do. So we coordinated the slowest day of the week. They brought in extra staff. They actually gave us a great discount and were hugely appreciative. So it really was a two-tier kind of thing where we're giving back to a small local business to help them out while their business is down and, you know, kind of doing something for the seniors that was kind of special. Uh, so basically – do you know how many people you had go take advantage of that? Is it already I happened? think we – I think we – it has already happened. I think we had about 100. So that's, that's pretty – it is pretty good. It's there's like 700 kids in the high school. So I, I thought that was still pretty good. I, you know, every, a lot of people saw it. Obviously, not everybody's going to make it just for a free cup of coffee if they if they don't have the time or, or whatever. But I was happy with the turnout. And do you feel at this point after, let's call it 10 weeks of everybody being worried and locked down? I mean, do you feel like you're as connected to people as you were before the you know what hit the fan? I, I think so. I mean, it's. I'm disappointed about some of the in-person events that we just can't duplicate with technology. Right. Uh, like they've they've canceled our Independence Day parade. We have a huge event around that, yeah. uh, and we're not going to. I can't duplicate that on Zoom. But but we've done a great job, and in some ways, we've probably made some better connections with a few people. Yeah, I knew you were upset about the parade because I, I saw your wife's post on Facebook. I appreciate her not using <laughs> profanity. You could tell she was mad about it being canceled. So yes. I think it's so interesting. You know, the business that we all should be producing is the business from people who know us and love us already. And I think most real estate agents out there feel like there's been no way for them to continue those relationships moving forward. And Mark, I think what you have done is so very smart. If you don't mind, let's go ahead and move on into your virtual listing presentation. Um, sure. Uh, real quickly, by the way, before we do that, Ishai, well, give me just a couple quick examples of how people are using virtual meetings like this uh, in the rental world. Are you seeing some of that creeping in there? Uh, maybe where they're doing a showing or a meeting with a tenant or something via Zoom? Yeah, I mean, uh, most of the units that get rented are occupied. And uh, so by design, you have somebody in there that can take a video without even the agent necessarily having to visit. We're just sitting there and facilitating whatever technology they want to use, whether it's Zoom or Facebook Live or FaceTime call. And if they, you know, if they want to take things to the next level, We've created a whole kind of A to Z virtual showing guide for both the landlord, the agents, and the tenants. If they want to take things to the next level, I just hired a local photographer that came and did the Matterport. Uh, they can certainly upload that into the system, search by a chair, just like they're doing on the sales side with MLS. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, Mark, you have always done listing appointments in the office, not in someone's home. Uh, I spend... A lot of my time when I'm in Atlanta going to people's homes, uh, you are my hero. I don't know exactly how I could make the everybody comes to the office work, but you were already sort of halfway where you needed to be in order to make these virtual listing presentations work. So in the three or four minutes we've got left in this segment, or maybe five minutes, let's talk through how does that process work. And my question for you off the bat was, how on earth can you price my home if you have not seen it? So are you okay if we just start there? Sure. Um, so, so I guess real quick, just to get people on board with this, that everybody thinks that buyers and sellers or sellers won't do this. Yes, they will. It's just the next step is that here's what we're going to do. We're going to get together. You're going to set up a time to come in and meet with Mark in the office and 75 to 80% just say, okay. You know, it, it's in our heads that people won't do this. 
you know, and I do about 90%. I don't do them all in the office, but about 90%, this really works and it works better. So, so let me, let me interrupt with one quick thing. I have heard yeah. agents, Mark, who before the pandemic did what were called long distance listing presentations. So yep. somebody from Centerville, Ohio owns a, a rental property in Metro Atlanta and the agent would do sort of what you're doing and they would do it on Zoom. And here's what's interesting is when they would meet with a seller prospect on Zoom who was halfway across the country and give them sort of a whole different flavor of how things work when the seller can't be there, their conversion rate, it wasn't 100 percent, but it was almost 100 percent because nobody else is doing it. Nobody else yeah. is good at it. Nobody else is talking. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're thinking, man, I wish I had something that I could do that made me different. This might be it. So I invite you to pay attention at least for the next few minutes. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, that's right. So the, the whole thing with needing to see it, that is what a lot of agents say and what a lot of coaches coach is the, how to get you in the door is I need to come see your house so I can tell you what it's worth. And I would argue that in, <laughs> without being too too much of a jerk, that we're all, that we're all lying to the sellers because we've all decided what the house is worth before we walk through the door because you already did the CMA. It's in your briefcase. You know, you've already decided it pretty darn close to what you think it's worth. So you don't need to see their house any more than I need to see their house. What I tell the seller is they know what their house looks like. The more important thing is we all need to look together at what do what did the relevant sold properties look like. So, you know, what we call comps, I use the term relevant properties. So we're looking right. at the relevant sold properties around them. And we need to look together and say, okay, this house sold for X. And the way I do it is I get them to start with, you know, about what do you think your house would sell for? Right. Then I look at the comparables and I find kind of what looks like the best on paper. And we click on that. So if they think it's worth 250, we click on the 250. And I, you know, the kitchen and the bathrooms matter more. But you know, the kitchen's an easy one. How does your kitchen compare to this? This house had a completely remodeled kitchen, had a granite countertops. You know, does yours look like that? Mm -hmm. and, hey, and don't skip over. You you mentioned to me when we were on the phone that you have a question with your seller prospect about honesty and whether or not they can be honest. Tell everybody about that because it's 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 brilliant the way you do it. Yeah, well, and that usually comes towards the end because once we've okay. arrived at the price together, okay. um, so and then they'll say, "Well, don't you need to see the house?" And I and I end with, "Yes, of course. I'm going to come out. We'll give you, you know, any tweaks that you need to do and kind of finalize everything. We've already agreed to work together." But yep. what I tell them is that typically we don't need to adjust the price unless it takes us a while to get from here to when we actually list and the market's changed. But to, but what I tell them is, you know, <laughs> basically as long as you haven't lied to me then it's going to be pretty much what we've agreed to. If I get there and you told me your kitchen was just as nice as the one we just looked at and it's not, then we're right. going to have to do an adjustment. But if you're honest, then right. we're pretty much there. Right. Um, so yeah, so where it really landed me with this was it, literally the very first time I did this. And it wasn't my idea. I picked this up for, as a best practice from somebody else that does this. But the very first one I did, I went through this exact same thing. We pulled up the house that's the, that's the best match on paper to theirs went to the kitchen, said, you know, how does this kitchen compare to yours? And right. the seller literally said, oh my God, that's way nicer than mine. <laughs> so I said, so, and he goes, so there's no way my house is worth that. <laughs> and we, we ended up not- what a difference that is from a house being worth 475,000 and they think it's worth 550,000. I think that's I think that's amazing. Yeah. We do have a comment from Renee. She says uh, they've been doing listing consults in the office for several years and she agrees 100% that people don't fuss at it. Um, uh, Luz wants to know if homes.com is free. Uh, I think homes.com is not free, but I think they've got some specials <laughs> going on right now. And then Steve wants to know if you have do's and don'ts tips for your Zoom trivia, and I'm just going to invite Steve to look up Mark Ryan in Centerville, Ohio. You'll find him on the internet, and you can reach out to him separately, and I'm sure Mark will be happy to answer those questions. So, Mark, when you, when you don't have to go to somebody's home, you avoid some very specific distractions, so talk to us about that, the benefit yep. of not having to so go. So, and that's part of the sales pitch to them is they're able to focus. This is an yep. important thing. So they take the appointment more seriously, but they don't have the kids aren't playing. The TV's not on. The dog doesn't have his nose in your crotch. There's not cooking that needs happening and dishes <laughs> and laundry that needs done. And so it's just easier for everybody. Yep. Um, 
you know, so they're more focused. They come in with a with an appointment kind of mentality. I'm sure this has happened to me many times. So I'm sure it's happened to other people on the call. You show up, the, the seller's outside mowing the yard, or they're doing yard work, or you know, they come in, they're all sweaty, and they're half or they're half cooking dinner while they're you're doing the appointment. So it's so much easier for you, and they deserve to to be made to pay attention. This is an important thing. So they're not getting everything if you've got all these other kind of distractions going on. So it really does work better. I love it. And so all the stuff you would do if they come to your office, you can do it the same thing if you're meeting on Zoom because you're not really missing anything. Although if they had their phone, they could actually go around and show you some stuff in the house if they needed to, uh, if they're on yep. Zoom. So real quickly, for those who are wondering what the steps are that Mark follows, first he builds rapport, which is understandable, wants to know if they have any experience with selling or buying a home and has questions about the process. Then they determine the market value of the home and the marketing presentation. Mark, I could keep talking to you about this subject forever and ever. Uh, we've got uh, little Ron Howard that we need to bring on. When I think of Ron Howard, I think of Opie from Andy Griffith. He does not look anything like Opie from Andy Griffith, but I can't help but thinking about that. So we need to go on. And Mark, I might uh, include you with some additional questions. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you for just pouring out genuinely to our crowd. I met Ron Happy Howard to. a couple of years ago. I realized Ron Howard had written a book, which, by the way, if you stay on to the end, you might get a copy of his book for free, a PDF copy, but the best selling book about selling real estate and getting people to want to come and find you instead of you chasing them all over the place. Um, you might be able to get a free copy of that. But Ron, Ron is also a real estate student. He loves to learn. He loves to apply new stuff. I don't think I've ever seen him be scared of applying um, uh, applying anything that he's learned, and it's just fascinating. And so we've got a couple quick questions before we jump into it. But Ron, thank you so much for being on. Oh, thank um, you. Basically, um, we've got questions about homes.com lead flow, and we're going to have to let homes.com answer that offline. Um, also, somebody is asking how many homes have been sold via virtual showings. And so I'd love for Ron, you and Mark to both answer that question. How many homes have you sold through virtual showings? And, and, and include in there ones you started with a virtual showing that maybe you had to do a physical showing on to kind of close it up or finish it up. Mark, you first. So I, we we didn't sell any specifically just from now of course I've listed some but to sell one okay. just from the virtual we were not shut down completely so real estate okay. was essential in Ohio so okay. we offered that as a solution to people and had a couple okay. take us up on it but okay. most people because they could okay we we practice safe practices but we were able to get people in so we weren't forced into it like some states where they had no choice perfect ron we had a stay at home order. Uh, real, realtors were still essential, but we thought we were going to get shut down. So we were preparing to go full virtual. We, uh, during, since March 8th, we put 34 uh, properties under contract. Uh, most wait, of those. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. In a time when you really are not supposed to be out and about, and I know in your area, by the way, it'd be bad PR for you to be out and about, even if the world says you can, uh, and you put 34 deals under contract? We put 34 deals under contract. Now, most of those had some process virtual, whether it was the initial showings, um, and, and some of these, um, you know, went under contract and then things got a little more difficult or a little more yeah. loose. I mean, we had eight different uh, orders from our governor that were as confusing as the last one. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but okay. it was a, a confusing time. I mean, on, on our social, Everything we were showing was virtual, but in reality, we were doing some really safe physical stuff as well. But yeah, we 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 kept on rolling. We're down 15%. Uh, we were hoping to, you know, hopefully be at 50% of normal. So. Wow, good for you. Jose has said that he has sold several homes after showing via uh, WhatsApp or FaceTime or something like that. And so he used the virtual stuff to bring him into the funnel and then do the physical showings. You're doing something very creative and that you're teaching your agents to hand off a buyer prospect to a lender with a virtual lender meeting. Let's hit that real quick and then we'll get into the meat of the matter. Uh, two things that you're doing that I think are just super creative. Hey, real quick too, you know, Every single, but everybody on this whole call at the beginning of the year said, we have a crystal clear uh, vision in 2020. Right. <laughs> None of us saw this coming, right? So it's uh, what we did. Our crystal ball was going to be smashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the, what we did in the last two months and what we do at the end of the year is going to have a, have us have a nice um, catchphrase. It's, you know, we're all going to be talking about hindsight's 2020. So we're going to use this 2020 a lot, you know, at the beginning and, and at the end of the year. But so, yeah, yeah. with lending, 
we, you know, we, we had four things that I met with my team and I said, these are the four things that we're going to really focus on through this. And we're going to be tip of the virtual innovation movement. We're going to, we're going to do everything virtual. We're going to keep, we're going to use that to keep our sales moving. Um, we're going to serve a golf of opportunity with the realtor community and with uh, charities in our area. And so, All order. so the the key thing right now we the biggest thing was we have a leads coming in that all of a sudden we we think they're going to be b or c leads a leads are people that are ready to ready to go right now so right. everybody's scared they got a stay at home order how do you keep the ball moving so we got our lenders we have four preferred lenders we made sure that they had good uh, zoom backgrounds that they were ready to roll and as leads were coming in we were approaching them like we're going to try and keep them as a leads so that that was the trick and so out of the deals that we have under contract now 11 of them actually did a virtual lender appointment lender where the, yeah the, the buyer agent wow. the lender so yeah well what was the price range of all your closings we had a question from a an attendee uh what's your lowest price and what's your highest price of those ones that were sold virtually uh, my average is 300 so it's it's yep. you know it's going to be somewhere in that like that 150 to 450 range Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think we did anything too high. Fantastic. As a matter of fact, I, all our high-end stuff, all our million-dollar-plus listings were taken off the market. Got it. We need to loop back. Mark, how did you get your cards for the coffee to the seniors? Uh, I think it was all social media. Uh, is is you don't you didn't actually mail any cards? I don't think. No, that was just the the ad that we posted. They just had to show their student ID that from the high school that said they were a senior and then they got the free coffee and the coffee shop just kept the total and then billed us at the end. Love it. Love it. Okay. So Ron, I'm shifting back to you. Uh, I'm, I'm moving to Baltimore uh, from out of, from out of town. I'm coming from Atlanta. I don't know anything about anything. I've got questions. You are doing some of the most creative, uh, innovative buyer showings online to help people who are relocating to the area or moving from a nearby area into the area understand what they're dealing with. So so talk us through these couple scenarios and give us a little information about the consumer that was involved in that process as well, because it's fascinating to me. Sure. You know, part of the whole strategy of keeping A buyers, A buyers and keeping them rolling was to, so we live in a community, if you look at this picture in Baltimore Harbor, there's about 15 neighborhoods. Everybody calls and asks about one neighborhood, but they always end up buying somewhere else because of the right. amenities of the neighborhood. This particular gentleman had called in, he's locked down in Pennsylvania. He's a boater. He wants to bring his boat down to Baltimore. He wanted uh, to, to see the, the marinas and what the different neighborhoods were around the marina. And we simply got him on Zoom, uh, shared Google Earth. We walked yeah. him around the marinas. I mean, we were actually looking at the marinas and uh, so, so zooming in. So you showed them the, the aerial and then you actually did Google Streets and started showing them what it looks like if you were down on the ground? Yeah, I mean, we, we, wow. I mean, we were no, we were looking. We spent a lot of time looking at how the marina was laid out. He was trying to like pick his his slip for his boat, and uh, yeah, it was it was awesome though. But it, like, if you look at that image, this is like the view we were showing him where the different neighborhoods were adjacent to the different marinas. So it, um, you know, for him, it kept the kept the thing going. He's still an A buyer right now. He hasn't bought anything, but it's yeah. something that would. That would normally burn half a day with a buyer agent driving around, showing marinas. You know, we did we did this in 20 minutes, and well, it's and something so many we're gonna. Come, so many people come to an area. I'm so sorry to talk over you, but you know they have a $500,000 budget, and you literally spend three days with them, helping them learn. Oh my God, I don't want to live in any of those six areas, but I do want to live in this area. And man, maybe as part of the future of real estate, we take that introductory meeting. We take it physically offline. I mean, we take it off the physical and we take it online and we help them get to know the areas. Now, this is another example. I question what the um, the buyer's motives are, but this is an example of, of somebody who wanted to decide which condo buildings to live in and the wife was looking for one thing and the husband was looking for something else. Tell us about that. So yeah, this is another buyer call we had. The the park that you see in the in the in the large picture is a park where all of the nannies and um people with small children meet up for lunchtime. And yeah. the, the wife wanted a condo building somewhere w that was close to where the nannies could meet. And uh, so, yeah, this is an image where, you know, we were showing the different buildings adjacent to the park. And the um, you'll see in the top photo. <laughs> uh -huh, right here. Um, yeah, the husband wanted to know how close the nightlife was to <laughs> uh, the building. And then 
we narrowed down uh, a building called Canton Cove, which is actually right next to the park. And they're going to be buying in there. And uh, and then we went to the listings on the MLS and pictures and uh, Matterport tours if they had them, which a lot of people have now. So right, uh, right. Yeah, we're this is something that we're going to continue to do. It's part of our deal now. And and uh, for our agents that um, have a hard time doing physical consults with buyers uh, yep. doing it virtual is just uh, is the way to go. It's so easy. Nobody's got to get in their car. And I would venture to say that you were more connected with the needs of your buyer prospects than you might have otherwise been if they came to town and you just start running around showing them property. Totally. Would you agree with that? I, I, I feel like, we, you know, we're, we're physically distanced, but we're, we're, I think with this video technology, we're socially connected. I mean, I, I feel like we've gone deeper with people. You know, we all talk about using an LP mama script and, yep. and talking through people. And when you're on video and, and you're, you're connected, you know, like when we do our daily huddles with video, everybody's got to have the video on. It's, it's, it's about socially connecting. And I feel like we've gone 10 times deeper and just uncovered a new part of the business that's never going to change. So in a time when we've taken people and physically we've moved them apart, you literally feel closer from an emotional standpoint, a connection standpoint to your team members and to some of your seller and buyer prospects, which is really amazing when you think about it. Let's kind of tie up this little knot right here. And when we're doing showings and we're actually physically, not physically, we're online virtually trying to replace a physical showing of a home, just every, give everybody some quick tidbits about what you did to make that really work. Uh, so if you're showing to your guy who's coming from Pennsylvania and he wants to look inside of homes, how did that so work? The, the, the first part of the quarantine where it was a state home order, our governor made it very unclear what that meant. So we were actually um, teaching listing agents how to use Zoom on their phone. And, then, and if, if this was if it was owner occupied. And then we'd have the listing agent teach the seller how to get on Zoom. And then we'd have buyer agent, listing agent, buyer, seller walking through the property. I had a guy in my office, Joe Bird, came up with this idea and I was like, this is awesome. And so we, you know, from early on would have all four of us, uh, you know, on a call, on a Zoom call and you get the seller walking around and the buyer says, hey, how old are those windows? And the seller is like, you know, oh, we had those replaced last year instead of waiting three days for that email chain to get back and forth from the buyer to the seller. So now is that a, is that a specific example of something that happened? I mean, do you really have the, those types of inter, inter, interchanges when you have a seller and a buyer on the same Zoom? Because I know that scares a lot of people thinking, oh, my God, I have been taught to keep sellers and buyers away from one another. I'm mean, like, don't let them talk at all. You got buyer agent, listing agent uh, as referees, you, you know, like so we didn't we, didn't ha we had no issues with it and we did it really? quite often. And, and it was amazing uh, for people that had never used Zoom before to, to send them a link and get it going on their phone and say, okay, you got that working, great. Send it to your client. They've never used it. Boom. Okay, great. Let's set up an appointment at 7 o'clock. I'm going to get my client, your client. We'll, all, we'll, you know, we'll have your seller walk through. He doesn't want us in the house. My buyers don't want to go in the house, but we're going we're gonna to get this done. And, and we did it, and it worked great. And, uh, you know, it's something in, you know, I, I think when the pandemic goes away, it's something that – we have the skill. If we ever need to do that, it's a, it's a pretty, it's not difficult to do. And you, you can train, you know, we, we took it upon ourselves. We were like, we are going to help other people in our industry learn this process and share it yep. and have them share it and keep things going. But then, you know, we thought we were getting shut down, which never happened, but it's, we, we got really, really close. Um, so we were just on top of everything we could possibly, we tried to turn our whole business virtual. Yeah, I love that. We've got a question. Uh, and by the way, I've just got a quick question. Tim, uh, are you finding a lot of the big homes.com users getting really better at doing virtual experiences for their uh, the lead flow that comes from homes.com? Oh, Tim. <laughs> Tim might have gone somewhere else. Tim, did you uh, <laughs> did you leave us for a minute? I'll bet, and, and Tim and I never talked about that, but I'll bet the agents who are converting the most number of leads uh, are the ones who are, are are quickly able to replace that physical showing with a face-to-face -face showing uh, on online. Uh, do both of you prefer to use Zoom? Um, we've got a question from an attendee asking if you prefer Zoom over um, GoToMeeting or something like that. Yes, definitely. I yeah, I do as well. Good. Okay. Now this is, I, I have, I just couldn't wait to get to this 
uh, section. And I want to talk about two things uh, before we close this up. I want to talk about number one, what were some of the things you did to help educate your realtor community? Because in your area, everybody was confused about the laws and you actually started having some realtor community meetings, which I think is right. probably going to be a great business building experience for you and a and recruiting. But then I also want to go into what I think is going to be the most meaningful thing we're going to talk about, which is how you did some real good for the community. And, and I'm going to cheese it up when I say and created some additional branding for yourself. I don't think you did it for that reason, but you got so much goodwill and exposure from what you did. And it happens to be the reason that you don't have any hair. So tell us <laughs> about both of those things. So, you know, the first thing, so we're all about serve uh, regardless of opportunity. So we, we part of, you know, our four goals. What do, you uh, mean two, by that? what do you mean by that? Serve regardless of opportunity. I mean, we built our whole business. Anybody that gets our free book will read that, you know, our, my whole business has been built on being involved in the community. I call it prospecting without prospecting because uh, it, it builds uh, reciprocity at a community level. It's a, it's a basically, uh, I buy you a beer, Cleve, you're gonna feel like you owe me a beer and you're not even gonna understand it. And you can take that to true. the community. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it happens at car dealers when, when they give you a $2,000 discount, then you walk out driving your Honda CRX and you don't like, what just happened there? Um, so it's, you can't expect it. You don't, it's not only like talking about it, but as well as we enjoy doing good in the community and we just know that uh, it, it 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 makes a huge impact um on the things that were you know the charities that we're helping out and the um uh our business as well, uh, well let's talk so. about let's talk about how you helped other real estate professionals first what was the okay. problem what did you decide to do about it let's hit that real quickly and then i want to okay. dig into the details of the ronald mcdonald house and believe in tomorrow I sensed a ton of confusion following. We have a, a real producers group in our area and everybody was, you know, everybody seemed all over the place. Didn't seem like there was a lot of leadership. Nobody was really clear at the broker, a real estate um, commission, uh, real estate associations of what actually was happening. So yes. I said, okay, I'm going to, we're going to take, we daily huddle Monday through Friday. We're going to open up. We're going to do a huddle like after the first Governor order came out. I said, we're going to open up and uh, I'm going to share that you can come into our huddle. I got two really sharp attorneys, two sharp lenders. I really tuned into what's happening. Uh, I got two other brokers, one really good with data, another one that's in a market a half hour away that's just really on top of stuff and really <clears throat> got the same mindset I, I do, which is all potential and possibility. And we did seven, eight of these, uh, and we started getting up to over 150 agents on board. We became wow. kind of like the source because the governor wow. would come out and say, um, you know, consumers have to stay at home, and we use client and customer. Like we, from a legal standpoint, it, it would take it was taking days for like the boards to figure out what that meant. And we had yeah. attorneys that would call the governor's office and, and talk to somebody, and they're like, no, 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 you, you know, you can work, you can go out there and show properties. So we would put these out, we'd, we'd create an event, a live event, uh, real producers would share it. We First one we did 30, then 60, then 100, 150 agents were tuning in and it became a thing. And we actually had Verl Workman come on, one of them, just because it, yeah. then it turned into, all right, um, you know, pe too many people are in that survival mindset. And and, and then, you know, Verl's like, it, th this is all, we're, we're bouncing, we're, you know, it's yep. not survival, it's reinvention. We're going to make this happen. And uh, so it went from like, good information, 15 minutes with legal, 15 minutes with lending. Uh, you know, I'd get on, you know, uh, me and the other brokers would share data and talk about what we were doing with our teams and getting everybody motivated. Uh, and then it went on to full on, oh my God, we need some some coaching. And it turned out like, right. a, and I, I have 40 plus new relationships with people that I, I hardly knew that now we're like texting each other and we're pretty close. So and you and you did all that without any obligation or expectation for them to do something for you. And you really didn't do it with the expectation that it would help grow your business. But as you have more relationships with people in your market, there's no way that can't help your business, even if it's just to give a consumer who's working with you a little bit of an inside track in a negotiation because you know the other agent. There's benefit all over the place as you know more people, and I love the fact that you did that, and you know what my guess is? You were probably uh, looking on the inside a little bit scared yourself of what might happen because you've got a big business and lots of expenses, and you're trying to figure out, oh my gosh, I don't want my business to go away, and I think a lot of people can relate to that, and by the way, uh, I also have to congratulate you. I think somebody's getting ready to have a baby. <laughs> 
heard correctly. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing what locking people up in a home together will do. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry, that's inappropriate for our discussions. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're 20 weeks. So yeah, yeah no, I, I'm just messing with you. Hey, yeah. you, you. You ruined the whole joke, Ron. You ruined the whole <laughs> joke. Um, so, but I love the fact that you took your fear fear, downright fear, and put it into pouring into and helping other people in the market. And that's what's made a difference for you. So let's talk about the Ronald McDonald House, the uh, Believe in Tomorrow Foundation, um, how you knew about them, what you knew was wrong, and what you decided to do to help them. And I'm going to say it created a, brand, a, a tremendous branding opportunity. Ron likes to correct me when I say that because it was not for the purpose of building his brand, and I understand that, but it certainly did. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. I, you know, I think a lot of us are, are dealing with a lot of pain and stress and everything. So everything I did um, was transmuting the pain into motivation, right? So and and showing leadership to my family, to right. uh, my team. So yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. It was all really like, hey, somebody's got to keep this together. And <laughs> I'm scared too, but I can't go hide under my bed. I got to go. Right. I gotta go do right. something. And, and, and uh, so yeah, so we, we had this idea six months ago to do a contest called the Big Shave Down, which was to me and a, a, a competing realtor where we compete yeah. big time. And he's got his nonprofit, Believe in Tomorrow. I got uh, Ronald McDonald House. And yep. we decided that um, it was a good time to actually do this virtually where we were going to compete. We did a video launch event where uh, basically we're competing. Whoever raised the most money, the other guy had to shave his, his hair. And, yep. and you stayed six feet apart in the video, if I remember uh, correctly, right? Yeah, yeah. We're very, yeah. very safe and, and everything. And, you know, we, we thought we weren't sure what was going to happen, but it was something both charities that – the volunteers couldn't come in. They were draining funds. Their big fundraising events might get canceled. So it's a it's a pretty tough time. And we thought, hey man, th this is going to be a tough time to raise money. But let's let's you know use this to do our you know serve regardless of opportunity. Right. Focus on it. We thought maybe we'd raise five grand each. So during the the video launch, Trent says. If we both raise ten grand, we'll both shave our head. Uh, and that wasn't planned. And that's why we're Good we challenge. both. Yeah, that's why we both ended up bald. Uh, so we ended up raising thirty-six thousand dollars, and yeah. it uh, it became a thing. And and we had heartfelt messages from the people that ran both charities. Like they all got distracted with it for two and a half weeks, doing video posts, and and um, it became a thing with our networks. And we're very humble with our community work. We want other people to kind of see it. We're not really self-promoting. We, we really avoid that, to be honest. And, and this event created sort of this paradigm where we were competing and, you know, magnified what we were doing a hundred times in normal. So, um, you know, well, it's I, just... I like, I, like, I want to suggest that people who are genuinely trying to do good for the community, that that is probably the best source of self-promotion. I'm not trying to say do one for the other, but when people see you purely uh, trying to pour into the community, they can't help but notice. Um, I do have a question from Brian who wants to know with the 45-minute limit on Zoom, how do you do a listing presentation? That 45-minute limit that you're referring to is only a recording limit. You can have a, a non-recorded meeting with Zoom that'll go on for longer than 45 minutes. Am I right, guys, or do you know? I think you both have the paid versions, if I'm not mistaken. $15 a month and you can get the paid version and it's unlimited. So that solves that problem. We've got a question from Joyce. Oh, by the way, Douglas says, thanks so much for putting this together and for all the great information. He has to head to an appointment. Uh, he must not be doing it virtually, so maybe he needed to have listened because <laughs> uh, he's having to head to an appointment there. Um, but Joyce wants to know, how did you get – how did you advertise to get people to show up for your Zoom? But I don't think you did a Zoom meeting to promote – uh, Ron, what you were doing, I think you did a lot of it on social media and via email and things like that to your regular customer database. Am I right or wrong? So we, the, when we opened up our daily huddle to other agents, any agents that wanted some direction, we, I, I just posted it on my personal page. Somebody saw it from our real producers group, which is really active in our market. Uh, you know, the 500 top agents are in that group. And they said, hey, we're going to share this. And then they just started sharing them every, every time. They're like, hey, if you're doing one of these events, because you know the the attorneys were awesome, the lenders are awesome, everybody's awesome, and they just shared it, and and then everybody shared it, and it just became it didn't go viral, but it got shared, and people were tuning in, and uh, you know looking back at it, it, it was it was a great distraction for me. Uh, it helped us stay focused, and and I built an uh, 
at least 40 relationships of people I've gotten pretty close with. Fantastic. And it gave you something to take your mind off the crap that was going on around you because you suffered the same downturn that we did, that all of us did, maybe a little bit more uh, for you than certainly someone like Mark or myself, because we were in areas that tended to stay a little bit more open. And we're in areas where people are like, ah, I'll do whatever I want to. And you're in an area where it says, hey, we better all follow the rules. So it's different. Um, but I think that's just amazing. And I applaud you uh, for doing something like that. I, I am going to keep a picture of you where you have the mohawk, just the hair left in the middle of your head. I think I'm going to put that on the wall and uh, throw darts at it real quickly as we close this up. And thank you, Mark. Thank you so very much, Ron. Thank you so very much. Uh, Ishai, thank you very much for providing the funding that helped make this happen. I hope people will take a look at um, your uh, rental beast service because there might be some agents who just need a little more consistency in their income. They don't like this roller coaster, and maybe that would help them. But we have four giveaways. If you go to workmansuccess.com forward slash RIS tech tools, workmansuccess.com forward slash RIS tech tools. You can get a copy, number one, of the full presentation for today. So you'll have everything that we used in our presentation. Feel free to use it in your business. You'll also get a copy of Create Demand and Stop Chasing Buyers, a, I believe, an Amazon bestseller a book, business book for real estate written by one, the one and only Ron <laughs> Howard. And then you'll get two resources, and this is probably the only place you can get them in the world today. Number one is a full white paper, if you will, on how to do virtual open houses. That, listen to this now how to do a virtual open house that actually generates leads because it's easy to do a virtual open house. It's hard to do one that actually generates lead flow. And then what are the things you need to master over the next six months in terms of virtual real estate? We've got an eight page white paper that tells you the things you need to master to be an expert when it comes to virtual real estate. And I'm not saying you've got to change everything from the physical world to the virtual world. I'm saying you need to be prepared to do everything you used to do in the physical world. You need to be prepared to do it virtually because if not, the river of real estate never stops running. So people are going to buy or sell homes based on their individual needs, not whether or not Ron Howard is ready to help them. And if Ron Howard is not ready to help them, and I believe he is, but if he was not ready to help them, they would find somebody else. Thank you very much for attending today's webinar. I hope you got some good information. Take it, put it to use, and I hope everybody stays self, safe and healthy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it so much. Take care.